Now using this data set, I want to illustrate how what I call the traditional approach to graphics and the grammar of graphics way differ in terms of how they would draw similar plots. So imagine that you wanted to plot the population of a country versus the count of suicides in that country. You could do that in R using this sort of command up here where DF is, is the, the data frame that holds these data, um, but you would do it in a very similar way if you were using, say, matplotlib in Python along with pandas. But basically all you do is you plot and then you've got an x variable and a y variable and you call this and it produces this sort of plot here. If I wanted to produce the same plot but using the ggplot approach to things, then I would run a command that looks something like this. And so it looks a bit more complicated when you look at it, right? You've got this kind of data frame that I'm passing the actual data itself as the first argument. I've got this thing AES here and I've got my X and Y variables presumably. And then I've got this other thing, John point. So it seems like I have done a kind of similar plot, but it's a li little bit more complicated in terms of how I've produced that plot. So you might find yourself asking yourself at this, at this point, you know, why would I use this approach to plotting? It seems far more complicated. So now I want to illustrate how the traditional approach to plotting and the grammar of graphics approach would differ if, say, what I wanted to do was color points according to the group that I was looking at. And the groups I'm going to be looking at here are on males versus females in terms of suicide counts. The traditional way in which you would plot this would be using something which is known as a kind of wide format of data. And so I've got the same data that I showed before, except now what I've done is I have created a column which was the population of, of males in the country in that particular age group and the population of females in the country for that particular age group. And I've got also counts of suicides in males and females. Uh, again, that's by age and by year. So notice that before what I had is I had a single column for population and a single column for suicides uh, in terms of counts. And I had another column which was sex. So this format, the wide format, is slightly different to that. The way in which you would plot different colors for the different groups in the traditional way is effectively you would call plot twice, uh, once for each of the different subpopulations. So here in R, the way in which you do that is you call plot with here what I'm doing is I'm plotting the male uh, population versus the male suicide count and I'm coloring that red. And then in R, the way in which you do this is you actually call points afterwards if I want to make a points plot. And I would do the same thing. I have X variable, which is now the female population and a Y variable, which is the, the female suicide count. Note that in Python, it would be slightly different. You'd probably have plot again here or in, in MATLAB, I think you just have plot again here. But the same principle applies. Effectively, I just overlay the second plot on the first one. The grammar of graphics way instead uses the long format of the data. So here, I have a single column for sex and I have a single column for the count of suicides and a single column for the population size of that particular group. And now sex here just designates whether that row pertains to males or females. So it's just exactly the same data, but it's in the long format. It's called the long format because the data set now has more rows than does the wide format. So how would I then plot this using the ggplot approach. Well, here it's actually quite simple for how to do this. I have exactly the same command as I had before, and now the only thing that I specify is color equals sex here. And then ggplot just goes ahead and it colors the points according to the sex. So in a way, it's already starting to look like the ggplot approach might in some senses be simpler for accomplishing slightly more complicated tasks. And we're gonna really see the power of it in the next lecture.